Hello, I'm Greg Recke of Recke Mods. Mid-2007 20-inch iMac. T95 100 Core 2 Duo. 6 gigs of DDR2. 2 terabyte hard drive with 10 different operating systems ranging from Tiger to Mojave on it. Let's get to it. Okay guys, if you haven't figured it out, we are going to be upgrading this iMac uh, with a SSE 4.1 compatible uh, Core 2 Duo so we can run Mojave on it and also High Sierra and Sierra and all the way back all the way to the original Tiger operating system and um, we're going to be upgrading it and uh, taking it apart. This is about to start the time lapse. But I wanted to show you a quick little trick, uh, a cheap little trick I used to uh, pull this screen off the first time. I uh, opened it up to look inside of it. Uh, I haven't cleaned it yet, so but I've taken the screen off and looked in it real quick. Um, this right here is a soap dish suction cup for a shower. Uh, my uncle actually gave me this and I've been pulling screens, uh, iPhone screens off with it because it's a really good suction cup and um, it's just, I know it's kind of funny uh, but it, it's it's very important you be careful with the glass on these things and there's actually pins on this model that go around so you've got to pull it off straight back you can't twist it or anything it will break the pins you might break the glass and i fix it recommends two heavy duty suction cups at, uh, that corner and that corner but um we're just going to stick this in the center and yank it clean off and it will work and it works great so we'll do that but before we do that i've got to take the ram um, door off so one second so what we're going to do now is stick this suction cup to it and pull. There we go. It's off. And now we start the disassembly. All right, so we've got the bezel off now, and we can start taking the uh, next parts out. What do we need to take off here? Okay, so needless to say, it's a lot easier to take this apart um, when it's laying down, unlike late 2009 and on IMAX. But um, let's keep doing this.
And there's the logic board. If we flip it around, we'll be able to see the heat sinks. I'll be uh, cleaning off the GPUs here and uh, redoing the CPU here, replacing that. It's what it all looks like there. Um, that was a pain to get apart. We're going to set this board to the aside for a second and swap out the hard drive. All right, so we have the new hard drive installed and the sensor is held on with packing tape because I don't have anything to stick it on with otherwise right now. The LCD is supposed to hold the sensor in place. It should hold for now. And I don't think the packing tape will do anything bad, I hope. But anyway, so now let's get on to the board. Okay, so I've already pulled the screws out of the heat sink here and we're ready to lift the heat sink off the CPU for the first time. So I literally just grab it and I've already disconnected the connector so it should just pop right off like that. So there's the CPU. I'm also going to take the heat sink off the GPU and repaste that and then we'll swap out the uh, CPU. Yeah, the GPU was a pain in the rear end to pull off, and I ended up uh, just taking the whole thing off the board. Um, here is the 2400 XT here, which I'm not holding in frame. There we go. Um, the thermal pads, I don't have any other ones, so I gotta reuse these really mangled ones. Yeah, um, hopefully it's gonna stay cool. <laughs> um, and here's the GPU heatsink. So we'll clean this up, get this back on the board, and then we'll replace the CPU. And there's the GPU right there, all nice and clean. For the most part, I missed the spot. But anyway, mostly clean. All right, and here's time for the whole point of this whole video, and that's to swap out this, uh, what is this, a T7300. We're gonna be swapping it out with the most powerful um, what is it, 800 megahertz bus um, Core 2 Duo you can get, which is the T9500 right here. So let's swap that out. Lift that out. It's not going in. Pins seem to be straight. And it's lined up. Feels like it's catching on something. Ah, we do have one bent pin right here. Alright, now it should go in. There we go. And it's that simple. Now I just gotta thermal paste it, clean up the heat sink, and uh, put the heat sink back on. And we can put the board back in, which I'm not going to film. Next time you see it, it will be doing its first boot up. So I'll see you then. All right, before I finish putting all the screws in, I only have two holding the LCD in. Uh, but everything should be connected other than the microphone on the top. Uh, so it shouldn't give me any errors because the microphone's not needed. Uh, we're going to turn it on and see if it will uh, do something. I think I have it on mute right now because I always forget to put the sound on before I do something like this. So it's going to be a, a mystery what happens until it happens. So let's go into the boot menu and see if we can get it to boot up to something. Well, that's a good sign. Hey, and there's all the systems. I only currently have Tiger through Sierra installed, and these are all recovery drives. But I am also going to have uh, Mojave on here, so that would be cool too. But uh, I didn't put Mojave on there because APFS on an external drive uh, doesn't really work. So, 
you have to do it on the internal. Let's put it in the Snow Leopard. Here we are in Snow Leopard. About this Mac. And here we go. We have it installed. I'll zoom in here because I can't move the camera any closer. 700 megahertz Intel Core 2 Duo. It worked. Uh, yeah, you may be asking why it says 700 megahertz. It's because this is a iMac 7 comma 1. Uh, they never they never updated the uh, firmware on the 7 comma 1s to support uh, the SSE 4.1 compatible um, Core 2 Duos, so even though they'll work, um, they report the wrong speed, but they run at the proper speed, and uh, this thing will be flying. It's um, the T9500, I can't remember exactly right offhand, I'll put it in an annotation right here. It's like 233 or something like that. It will be running at 2.33 gigahertz, I think. Uh, I'll correct it if that's not right, but anyway. So yeah, we've got the uh, DDR2 installed. Uh, we'll zoom back in again. DDR2, and it looks like it's working. I'm going to clean up the LCD some, hook up the microphone, and clip the case back together. And um, I'll also install Mojave, uh, and then we'll give you a quick tour of the system and um, the performance specs. And I'll be back in a little while. Okay, so before we continue on showing you how, what it can do and how it's running and stuff, we finally got back together. I thought we'd do a quick uh, showing you what it looks like and a quick backstory. Um, these things were the next mall right after the white iMac over here. Um, in fact, the white iMac helped me get the uh, Tiger install that's on here on here. Uh, long story on that. But um, it's got a lot of dust collecting on it. Uh, this thing's static prone. It will collect dust like a magnet. But anyway, um, here it is. This is a mid-2007 20-inch iMac. Um, you watched me upgrade it. It's working great. I've already tested it. In fact, I've already filmed the ending of the video um, by the time I'm filming this. But um, when this model came out, it was a bit thinner, as we can see here. It came with a a super drive and these are basically identical on the outside case to the um, mid uh, the um, the early 2008 models and the uh, early 2009 models okay if we look here we've got headphone audio in uh, three USB 2's Firewire 400 Firewire 800 gigabit Ethernet and um, mini DVI uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And then there's the power button. Uh, and these cases are um, put together more similar to the uh, white iMac than the um, 21 inch and 21 and a half inch iMacs that came out in late 2009 and continued on into 2011. So anyway, uh, yeah. So we're back here. Um, Here's the iMac and uh, all the features it had. The only differences between this and the early 2008, they had a similar motherboard, a logic board. Um, and Colin, Mister, and I have been experimenting with these for a while. Um, Colin, I, I think, I don't, I don't know, but I think that the uh, early 2008 actually runs on a faster bus speed because they came with a lot faster CPUs and ran with uh, 800 megahertz DDR2. This runs with 667, um, where on those you can run um, 1066 megahertz CPUs from what I can tell. Not totally sure on that. Uh, you can only run the um, 667 megahertz CPUs, uh, or no, the 800 megahertz CPUs on this, so the T9500. Uh, but otherwise, the logic board is almost identical and uses a similar chipset. They're basically the same chipset, only I guess one's flashed for faster. I don't know. I, and, and they're weird. Um, 
This is just a weird system altogether. It's kind of like a stopgap between the white iMac and um, the later ones. But um, this was the first aluminum iMac, and it, it's really cool. The early 2009 ones are similar to um, uh, the, they all use NVIDIA chipsets. The 2007 and 2008 used um, Intel chipsets. So this is APFS flashable, and I have a, the APFS flash on it, so I don't need any helper anything to uh, make it load up Mojave. So anyway, I'll now set up the camera and we'll um, go through the operating systems as quickly as possible because I know by this point this video is getting pretty long, so let's get to it. Okay, so we have the camera set up here. We are ready to boot up the system, uh, do the power on, and get it, get it into the boot menu. So let's get going. I'll hold in the option key and you'll see all the drives populate. That is a lot of drives. So we have Tiger, Leopard, Snow Leopard, Lion, Mountain Lion, Mavericks, Yosemite, El Capitan, Sierra, High Sierra, Mojave, and Mojave. Um, I've got two Mojaves because I'm, I've got one called Main OS where I'm just going to use it as a normal computer. But the other Mojave is literally just left there to have a normal, plain, untouched Mojave. So we'll boot it into Tiger right now. Tiger is the earliest supported OS on here. It's the earliest Intel OS. And honestly, Tiger in Intel is a very useless operating system. Operating systems didn't really, um, they weren't really worth anything until Leopard came out. Um, this was the, it's just, it's, it's very useful in PowerPC, but Tiger, unless you have a nostalgia for it, uh, on Intel, it's pretty useless. It's not a very good operating system on Intel systems. Um, of course, you can't run Classic on here because it's an Intel system. It's pretty limited. They didn't write many apps for it. Um, but, you know, uh, this was the earliest supported. This iMac is the oldest iMac, uh, the oldest Mac in general that can run um, Mojave um, with the CPU upgrade. And also, it's it, it runs Tiger. Uh, it was one of the very last Macs, uh, new Macs, to support Tiger. And this supported 10.4.10 uh, out of the box. Now, for me to install Tiger, because they never sold a retail Intel Tiger, I had to actually get a restored disk. The thing is, I didn't have the restored disk for this system. So to get it to work, I had to use my 4.1 iMac that's over there. And I found a 5.1 boot disk, a uh, restored disk. And I had to modify that disk so it would install on the 4.1. And uh, basically, I used, uh, I had this in target disk mode. I, I installed it with the uh, white iMac. And then I updated it on the white iMac to 10.4.11. Um, and uh, then turned this uh, target disk mode off. And it booted right up, and we got Tiger on here. Uh, it'd been more graceful if I'd actually had the supported operating system, but I didn't. So, um, the, the original discs. So, yeah, it, it was a pain to get on here. But, as we can see here, it is indeed running Tiger, and it works. 10.4.11. Uh, if we go to more info, it says iMac 7.1. And one little fun thing on here. I'm running 104 Fox on it. There was an Intel um, branch that came out in 2017, um, and they didn't do many updates. This one's based off of, uh, this was before the uh, feature parity releases for PowerPC. This is just 104 Fox 45. Um, so it's, it's still current enough where it will load modern day websites like YouTube. Let's see here. Load up the world's fastest MacBook Pro. That's been a failure by now, by the way. Just to let you guys know that. But um, you know, it's it's loading an ad right now. If we skip ads, 
Hello, I'm Greg Rutke. It Rutke works. And welcome to a special episode. You know, we'll it's real neat. Uh, but July. then again, 10.4 Fox, the Intel version, it's not supported by 10.4 Fox. Someone else, someone else opened up the branch, but they didn't make anything else for it. Um, they released a few updates, and I think that was it. It hasn't really been updated since. So 2017, 10.4 Fox is the last supported browser for Intel Tiger ever, probably. No one else is probably ever going to develop for it because, like I said before, Intel Tiger, other than just to say, hey, this system's running Tiger, it's, it's not a very useful operating system on Intel's. So... Uh, I'm sorry if you like Tiger on an Intel system. It's 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 pretty worthless. Um, so we'll uh, restart the system again, and we'll now load it up into Leopard. And here we are in Leopard. It's loading up right now. If we go to about this Mac. It says ten point five point eight. Go to more info. And it's the same iMac as we can see there. Um, yeah, it works great. It's um, also got 10.4 Fox on it. This is called 10.5 Fox. They made a derivative for each Intel version from 10.4 to 10.6. Um, and this is currently the last supported uh, browser also, and it hasn't been updated since 2017, but it too does work with modern websites. And there might actually still be another browser coming out. Ethan Nelson Moore, aka Parrot Geek, is uh, currently working on a uh, Firefox 52 ESR release, uh, which he plans on supporting Snow Leopard, and he's told me he might also try to get it to support Leopard. So this might not be the last operating system for Leopard. And Leopard's still pretty useful more or less, and it has a lot of uh, normal features, you know, it's it's pretty useful today still, unlike Tiger. So let's restart again. All right, and now we are in Snow Leopard, as we can see here, about this Mac. It says 10.6.8, go to more info still the same iMac and uh, on Snow Leopard until Ethan's um, fire, uh, legacy Firefox uh, Firefox legacy whatever he's calling it uh, 52 or whatever he's going to call it the one based off of ESR 52 um, until that comes out the most recent browser you can get that works great in Snow Leopard is um, Arctic Fox it's based off a of new moon 27 or something about like that. Yeah, New Moon 27, uh, which was in turn based off of Firefox 27 um, once upon a time, but it still uh, gets uh, frequent up updates, works great, and it will still load modern websites like YouTube. Totally fine. Works great. So, yeah. Currently, I'm running Arctic Fox on it. So now, oh, and uh, Snow Leopard, of course, is the last operating system that supported PowerPC applications using Rosetta. So that's another reason if you want to run um, PowerPC apps on an Intel Mac and your Mac supported Snow Leopard, this is why you'd want to run it to run those apps. So we'll restart it again. And we'll go into the armpit of the Mac OS X family, um, aka the Vista of Mac OS X Lion. Um, not many people tend to like Lion. I, I don't like Lion. Lion was not a great operating system in my opinion, but um, a lot of people got stuck on it. Um, and, you know, the system can run it. So let's run Lion. And here we are in Lion. If we go to about this Mac, about this Mac, it's still loading. Lion's kind of slow. <laughs> there we go. 
10.7.5 as we can see right there and if we go to more info it says mid 2007 iMac all the specs and stuff we could go to system report it would say 7 comma 1 iMac pretty neat stuff and this is actually using a modern day Firefox this is running Firefox Quantum but it's not any Firefox Quantum um, Firefox has dropped support for 10.8 and 10.7 and only supports 10.9 and later but Ethan Nelson Moore aka Parrot Geek um, he actually um, made a working Firefox Quantum that you can get on his uh, Parrot Geek website and it works great this is literally just Firefox Quantum and it works perfectly in Lion and Mountain Lion we'll show you it opening up in Mountain Lion but rest assured this is literally um, a modern day Firefox Quantum it works totally fine so let's restart it again this is going to be a long video and let's get it in the Mountain Lion and here is Mountain Lion loading up as we get into later operating systems, you'll notice that the boot speeds slow down a lot. Uh, but once they're loaded up, they run fine and they run really quick. Here we are, 10.8.5. Uh, <laughs> so we go to more info. It takes a while to load it. Remember, we're running on a hard drive. But same info. Um, 7 comma 1 iMac pretty neat and if we go down boom Firefox legacy and it just plain old works Ta -da! pretty cool so let's once again restart Hey, it's time to get into a lot of people's favorite Mac OS X, which I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but I didn't really get to use it a whole lot. Mavericks. And here we are in Mavericks. This is really getting to be a long video. As we can see, we're all loaded up, more or less. Doesn't look like it connected to my Wi-Fi. Oh yeah, there it goes. It's just not saying it's connected. It's weird. But anyway, we're connected. About this Mac. 10.9.5, more info. Mid-2007, 2007. And iMac 7.1. And this is running just regular old Firefox Quantum. And I'm worse off showing you the browsers now because this is a the most current release of Firefox it, and it works in every um, OS 10 past um, mountain lion so as we can see it just works pretty neat so yeah let's restart again and here we are in Yosemite this was the first um, Intel OS X I really used. I used Leopard and Tiger on my iMac G4, but I never actually used any uh, other operating system other than Yosemite when I got my first MacBook. Um, that was the new operating system at the time. I had used Mojave, I mean uh, Mavericks, and a little bit of Snow Leopard in VMs. Um, but I, I never really got into them plus it doesn't run good on a VM so if we go to about this Mac here we go we're running Yosemite 10.10.5 and if we go to system report iMac 7 comma 1 pretty cool let's restart again El Capitan. This was the very last supported operating system period for the Sauron Kava 1 iMac with the original CPU. Um, and 
this was the last officially supported operating system also. But with a CPU upgrade and Colin Mister's um, patchers, this will run up to Mojave currently. And we'll get into the unsupported patched versions in a second. But let's admire El Capitan running on here. Here we are, we're in El Capitan. Go to about this Mac. Here we are, OS 10 El Capitan system report. iMac 7 comma 1. <clears throat> now let's get into the unsupported operating systems that won't even run without the CPU upgrade and I don't want to shut down. Cancel. That run with don't run without the CPU upgrade. So let's get it restarted again. Alright, Sierra. The operating system that I believe Apple wants you to kind of forget because it's a pain to get a download of now. Um, you can't really get it from the App Store anymore. Um, it, it, it just bugs out if you try to download it and stuff. It's a pain to get a copy of Sierra. It's like Apple just swept it under the rug and wants to forget it. Don't know why. I thought it was a pretty good operating system. Um, very stable and not too different than High Sierra in my opinion. Um, I, I still use High Sierra and Mojave daily though <laughs> um, and El Capitan. There, there's a reason why they swept Sierra under the rug, I think. It's just it's just a, a bastard child or something like that. It's not very loved. In fact, Colin hasn't updated his patcher for Sierra in so long. Um, it's been like a year and a half. And you'll notice here, this system still has the original Wi-Fi card in it. And Sierra doesn't support this Wi-Fi card. But if you notice right up here, it's connected and it works. And that's because the High Sierra uh, 4321 or whatever it is, the 21 Broadcom uh, patch for High Sierra, if you boot it into the High Sierra drive and run the uh, patcher on the Sierra drive, you can install the patch. And this patch was also created by Ethan Nelson Moore, a.k.a. Parrot Geek. He came up with the uh, way to make it work. And if we go to About This Mac and go to System Report and go down to Wi-Fi here, we'll see it does indeed work totally fine. And thank you very much, Ethan. And this is the same patch that works in High Sierra and Mojave natively. Um, you just have to backport it for Sierra because the patcher hasn't been updated in so long. Um, but it still works. And as we can see, we're running Sierra and it just, it works great. So let's restart again. It's getting old. <laughs> And here we are, we're in High Sierra now, and we still have the Wi-Fi working, as we can see here. Go to about this Mac. Here we go. We're showing that we're running High Sierra here. If you go to System Report, there you go. iMac 7 comma 1. So let's boot into the last operating system and then we'll get into the outro video um, shortly thereafter. I hit shut down again. Restart. Here we are in Mojave. Wi-Fi is working. About this Mac. Here we go. System report. iMac 7 comma 1. Now we're going to put this into my main machine really quick. I won't have to go into the boot menu for this. I just have to hit restart and let it restart. 
I want to show you one thing real quick. Um, I told you guys that um, earlier in this video that I couldn't remember exactly what the CPU speed was. I thought it was 2.33. It's actually a 2.6 uh, gigahertz uh, CPU. Um, the 233 I was thinking of would have been the T7600, which would have worked in, um, you know, the 4,1 and 5,1 iMacs and the Mac Mini 1,1 and 2,1. This is actually more of the, it's, it's, this system basically performs like my early 2008 MacBook Pro here. It's literally um, the same CPU. So um, it runs at 2.6 gigahertz. And it does indeed run at 2.6 gigahertz and not the 700 it reports. And I finally figured out a way to show you that it does indeed run at 2.6. And we're going to show you that in the main OS right now. Here we are. We're in my main OS now. It's going to still take a second to load up, though. There's a lot of stuff on here. Um, once it's all loaded up, like I said before, it's really quick. But it's loading up off of a hard drive. So let's wait for my iStat menus to load in. There we go. Okay, so we should be loaded up now. Uh, I found this program on the App Store called Translucent. Um, it's a pretty old program now. But it will tell you the CPU activity and speed. And as we can see here, it says 2.59 gigahertz, which is 2.6 gigahertz. Let's quickly close this out. About this Mac, 700 megahertz. But if we go back into translucent here, it starts out at 700, and then it realizes no, it's not 700, it's 2.59. So it is running at the 2.6. And I did promise you guys quick benchmarks here. So I'm going to pause the video really quick and pull them up on the browser and uh, show you the results of um, this upgrade. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we'll start off with the Geekbench 4 results here. And uh, on the left is the original non-upgraded iMac with three gigabytes worth of RAM. And on the right is the upgraded T9500 system with six gigabytes of RAM. And as we can see here, we went from a 1351 to a 1646 on the single and a 2284 to a 2826 on the multi and it's just leaps and bounds quicker for most tests I think there's a few anomalies but it it works it's a lot quicker as we can see here then if we jump over to here we have Geekbench 3 results and we went 1191 to 1536 2166 to 2768 and it's just it's it's very quick <laughs> as we can see here big difference so lastly to show you it really is the same as my early 2008 macbook pro it, it's the same basic score um you know this little room for error here and as we notice they have basically the same specs it's um it's a neck and neck race here so that's why it runs everything it runs so well. Um, so yeah. So anyway, let's um, wrap it up by uh, going on to the wrap up video where I have already filmed it. I'm showing you how group FaceTime works and then we'll wrap up the video from there. I hope you guys enjoy that video. I'll see you, I guess, in the past with past me. So bye, hi, anyway, bye. <laughs> Okay guys, so I brought up the About This Mac screen here uh, just to show you that it is indeed running on the iMac, iMac 20 inch mid 2007. And uh, this is the uh, group FaceTime test. We're going to uh, be calling the Mac Yak group and seeing if we can get a few people to connect and say hi to them. 
and that will show you that it actually does work. So um, let's give it a shot. Hey Steve, how you doing? Ooh, you got a fancy camera there. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's uh, my usual setup. I'm actually filming on a different phone now, but um, I still have a directional mic, so I thought I'd use this one too. How nice. you doing? I'm okay. How are you doing? Doing well. I think this uh, video test is uh, working out pretty nicely. I wish a few other people would have connected, <laughs> but as you, we can see in this video here, group FaceTime works, guys. So that's awesome. Hello. <laughs> this is Steve from Mac84 and also Mac Yak. <laughs> so, yeah. It's pretty neat. I don't know where I am, but I hope it's somewhere cool. Oh, my dining room. Hi, Jay. Yo, what's up? We got friends. Yeah, we have friends now. Here's Jay Vry. We have friends? Yeah. <laughs> I never signed up for that. <laughs> So yeah, it looks like it's working out great, guys, and I'm very happy with this setup. Um, and that was basically the last test that needed to be run on this thing. Um, this is actually being filmed before I film the rest of the video, but this is the ending of the video. <laughs> Did I just sign up for a test I never signed up for? Ah, uh, basically. Oh, sweet. Congrats. We're going to wait for our royalty checks to come in the mail. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so anyway, I'm not taking a bath. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thanks for joining me, guys. I'll uh, catch you later. Right. See you later. <laughs> see ya. So yeah, guys, as we can see there, the group FaceTime worked, and that's basically the end of today's video um, and stuff. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, the iMac works great. I'm very happy with it. And um, it's amazing all the operating systems that it can run. And, um, you know, I, I don't really know what else I'm showing in the video. Um, this is, I just decided to film the ending before I filmed the middle part. <laughs> but anyway, that's the end of today's video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thank you for joining in. Um, don't forget, I am now sponsored by SellYourMac.com, so if you have a Mac or an a Apple device you'd like to sell, go to SellYourMac.com slash RudKMods. And also, don't forget that I now do have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help and support me, that would be awesome. There will be a link at the end of the video and also in the description below. And this has been a RudKMods video. I almost forgot to mention, guys, how much did this Mac actually cost me? It cost me about $150. It cost $50 to buy it. Um, it was from a local guy on Facebook Marketplace. He was getting rid of a large lot of these, and each one of them was 50 bucks a pop. Really good deal. I went and picked that up locally, and then it was about 50 bucks for the T9500 CPU and another 50 bucks for the DDR2 RAM. Um, the six gigs of it, those four uh, gig modules are pretty expensive. Um, in fact, they're about 40 bucks. Um, <laughs> and uh, I got that and then a two gig module for like six or seven, yeah. Uh, four gigs are really expensive. But um, it was 150 bucks. I already had the two terabyte hard drive laying around and um, so that was basically free and yeah I thought you guys would just like to find out about that and um, anyway once again thanks for watching guys bye I also forgot to show you guys what it looks like to have this many partitions on the system here if there's only one hard drive in here as we can see right here and if we scroll down it's all the partitions that it sees right now, but there's a lot more because of recovery partitions. I thought that was just interesting, and you'd find that interesting.